Hello, friends. Hi, it's Eric here with Rachel. We are live streaming. My dad asked us tonight at dinner to play What Meow Would You Bring Back from the Dead? And, you know, we played what, what artist, what musician, what writer, you know, that kind of thing. Um, for philosopher, I picked uh, Thomas Aquinas, which was a good choice. Uh, Rachel picked Abraham Lincoln for the first, the first sort of open-ended question. Mm -hmm. Be an interesting fellow. Sure. Yeah, he sounded like an eccentric, so. Um, he does have a top hat. You know. Yeah, he does. And he's, he's about your height, too. And um, actually, it was his wife who kind of, like, turned him onto the idea of slavery not being a good thing. So I would like to. Hold on a second, Mary. Slavery not a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> right? Hmm. Mary Todd Lincoln, hmm. you she... are you are really tossing some revolutionary notions at me. Yep. Yep. So he was known for like like going into places and like working places and places that were like people who um, were helping him campaign and stuff and he was just like very um, nonchalantly talk about these crazy ass stories or just strange stories or just interesting stories and people were like silent for hours um, so I would love to have heard one of those stories that he told he sounds like an interesting person Woody Allen has an incredibly great one act play he's called it. It's sort of like comedy writing, basically, but um, um, called, I think it's called The Question or something. Abraham Lincoln is famous for saying, somebody at one time asking him, How long should a man's legs be? And him answering, Long enough to reach the ground. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so the thing is, <laughs> this, this, this one act play begins with Abraham Lincoln meeting with his like assistant in the office and saying, I got to tell you about this. I got to tell you. <laughs> so at the press conference today, somebody asked me, how long should a man's legs be? And I say, long enough to reach the ground. I got to tell you, it's slayed. They were dying. <laughs> the whole press call was hot. It was hilarious. That's right? so funny. And then it just goes, um, Mr. President, why do you suppose that person asked you that question in the first place? <laughs> why would he ask how long <laughs> should a man's legs be? Huh. And Lincoln's like, well, I, I never thought about that. I I just, but I, I, that's not the point here, Carson. <laughs> you know, the point is I was hilarious. Yeah, I know you were hilarious, President, but aren't you curious to why he asked it? And then he can't get it out of his head at that point. Abraham he can't get it out of his head. So why the person asked this question? And oh, you want to bring back Genghis Khan? That was discussed. That was discussed at dinner. Genghis yeah, Khan. Yeah, that was. was that was. And we. Well, I like the idea of Genghis Khan coming back and all of this bullshit not working. You know. Well, basically, yeah, I don't think he. I think he's still like go after like a gang of people to like follow him, but uh, I don't think it would go as planned. I think you get a little, little something, a little brewing, you know? Oh, you? Just a little. Yeah, he probably ended up in prison pretty quick, though. Yeah, he'd be like the Tommy Wisu of uh, society. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, in this in this play by Woody Allen about, about Abraham Lincoln, they cut to the scene where the guy who asked the question is back at home, and and his wife's saying, you said what? And the guy's like, I don't know what came over me. He finally called on me to ask him a question. I had my question ready. I was ready to ask it. And then he asked it. He called on me and I just said, how long should a man's legs be? And she said, well, why would you ask that question? <laughs> you know? And it turns out that um, his their, their child was caught asleep on guard duty and was scheduled to be executed. And they wanted to ask 
President Lincoln to commute their child's sentence, but he just, he had a brain fart, right, at the moment when he was going to ask it. But uh, fortunately for him, Abraham Lincoln has been so obsessed with why this person asked this question in the first place that he has, he, he chased down who it was who asked it. And he, he bursts into their room, bursts into their house and says, I have to know why did you ask this question? And then it all gets revealed and he commutes the sentence and it all ends happily ever after. Oh my God, that's amazing. Isn't that a great play? Yeah, that's a great play. <laughs> yeah, Woody Allen, it's one of his, it's one of my secret speech weapons. If oh, I ever no. were to do another duo and turp, I do that, have him do that play, the duo and turp. But yes. I, I'm not um, not much of a drama event coach, you know. Would you like to talk about this? I would. This is the White Walker we got. You're going to go with Thomas Jefferson. My dad pointed oh. something out, though. If you bring back a slave owner, you're going to probably have problems. Slavery. I know, because I said George Washington as a soldier. I want to bring him back as a soldier. Yeah, but dad says they, they know, send him back to Mount Vernon and they string him oh, up the pole. Damn, I know. Damn. Hi, Winston's mom. Should I tell you, dad, that they type him as an ESTJ? Uh, who? Washington. Oh, do they? Yeah, they do. <coughs> Lost time is never kind of again. <coughs> yeah, I agree. I agree that Benjamin Franklin would be very interested. In yeah, and we would, both agree. We all agree on uh, Benjamin Franklin. Another one we all agreed on was Mark Twain. Mark Twain would be both interested and interesting. You know? I really want to finish that one. What, the bonnet? Yeah. Oh, you didn't finish it? No. There's nothing left in the bowl. I got something. Or um, you know, Thomas Jefferson, another slave owner, he might give you some problems in the modern milieu. You know, it's like, sure, you could say, well, everybody owned slaves back then. Come on. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's really going to fly. Mm. <laughs> Would anyone ever say Hitler? Mm, I, people, I mean, I, I want to have him at a party. I mean, it would I be interesting. Force, yeah, I want to make him go to a party. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think that would turn out? you think he'd just be yelled at by everybody the whole time? Probably. There'd be one side. Would they even give him a chance to explain himself? What like, this is? <laughs> <laughs> it was this, like that would be such a weird place for him to be. I get how you guys are all. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Right, I get right. It. And I know that you guys know that I was like in my own little really nice area for most of the war. <laughs> Look, I was in a really difficult place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I got to let my generals and armies do whatever they wanted to at the time. Let's just, let's just say I was, I was really in a really negative space. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they're not there anymore. And, then, you know, it's like, don't don't judge people by their worst mistakes, okay? <laughs> I want to bring back <laughs> Mickey Mantle to see uh, <laughs> how many uh, livers he actually, what liver he was on at the time of his death. Winston's so mom. Uh, I had we asked the we asked a couple of bud tenders like which strain is the least uh, the least coffee and uh, one of the bud tenders gave us an, an answer another one just basically said that's not that's not really a vector or something which is ridiculous but the truth is that I have small lungs also have like acute asthma also um. I feel more stony after I smoke. Like, I mean, cough. Like, I know it's in my lungs. And it's actually not bad. This white water is really... It's really good. It's really good. <sighs> I'm sorry for the... Um, <coughs> F.E. stuff? Mm. Eh, who cares? <laughs> um, I guess the purpose, of the question should be modified to indicate what 
what purpose are you bringing them back for? So if you're just bringing them back for have a conversation with them, take them to a party, like, okay, which historical person would you show, up, show up at a party with? Like, hey, you get to borrow him for the evening, him or her for the evening, and just show up at the party and be like, look who I got. It's Mark Twain. What, the That's real Mark pretty... Twain? Yep, the real Mark Twain. I brought him back Elvis. from history. I'm claiming Elvis. I think that he'd be a popular party person. Yeah, I'm sure Elvis would be popular. Yeah. And make him go, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'd get a random 30-year-old peasant from the plague times. <laughs> would you get one that's infected with the plague? Oh, no! Oh, no! I've already... I I'll take a silver! What happens then? Be... <sighs> I don't want more masks. No, I'm already so annoyed with the I'm masks. I'm so masked out. You know why China's like we want you to be more like us, so we're gonna make a thing that's virus, and it's like the cold, so it's not so bad. So it we travel to you, and now you have to wear masks like us. I mean, um, Ben Franklin <laughs> is the clear winner as far as party yeah. experience goes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, party experience. Yeah. You know, he married though. He actually like settled down. He actually, like, at his, like, with long, like, he died. When he died, he was, like, a settled man. He still he had lived. Um, well, you know, people you least want to take to your daughter's, historical figures you least want to take to your daughter's quinceanera, Lucky Baldwin. It's a really fucking good one, actually. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. take Lucky Baldwin to your daughter's quinceanera. Yeah. You also don't want to take that guy who painted all the naked Naked Native Ladies. What was his name? Oh again? my gosh, yes. He oh, was a, a song about the Met. Uh, oh my god. I forget what his name was. Was his name with a G? Oh yeah, Gauguin. Yeah, go Gauguin. Gauguin. Nice, Good. nice team. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein, another person you don't want. <laughs> yes, no, 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 no. <laughs> Dead, dead celebrities you don't want at your daughter's king, so, king's in era. Lucky Baldwin, the founder of our hometown here, Arcadia, had a series of 16-year-old girlfriends and wives as in his, like, 60s. And oh, 70s. my gosh. <laughs> and Winston's mom, I'm looking out for you. That's why I'm inviting Elvis. Hey, Octavia Silva. I'm inviting you to my party. Alice and Octavia Silva. We didn't quite make it. Oh, so, so no, no, hey, well, listen, Rachel, I knew we were making it, it when, when we <laughs> really? did. Really? Well, because we did a lot of errands today. We needed to We time, did. But we didn't quite get to that one. No. Is, we'll get to that one tomorrow. It's, it's, it's like on the table, ready to it's go. Ready to go. We just we need been, a package and get there. We've been attending to a lot of shit, though. I'm, I'm proud mm -hmm. of us. Yeah. We've been getting, to, uh -huh. we've been dealing with the Mercury and retrograde. Stuff. Yeah, we have. Oh my gosh. And this is part of Mercury, Mercury retrograde. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I'm feeling pretty on top of shit right now. I'm feeling pretty happy about that. Like, where's the talk about shit? Hey, Sarah. Hey. 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 Possibly it's why you can't draw. Yeah. You gotta deal with some old stuff. Like I got to pay the, the bills. We have a we have an 11 p.m. tonight. That's fine. Okay. I'm <laughs> I'll be till with midnight. you. Well, if you want to, yeah, I do. I want to. Okay, cool. A good thing it's I took a long nap. Off. I took a long yeah, nap did. today. It was so nice. He was such a burrito baby. I'd like to take care of his nap times. I like to give them to him. So while he, I, I tidied up a little bit uh, while I was in here, and then you know. All right, cool. Well, thanks for the reminder, is it? I'm glad I wouldn't forget about it. Thanks, Isaiah Rude. That's a Mercury retrograde thing, too, to slip up on. Well, see, Mercury retrograde is being nice to us this time. Um, yeah. Oh, you're still out of Rollins, and that is not happening. Well, that's true. Uh, it's good to know. Yeah. 
I am both jealous and not jealous. I'm enjoying my my non Adderall time at the moment. That's great. It's not that great. I is that condescending? Okay. I'm glad that you're enjoying your nap times. Are oh, you coming Sky up on break time here. yourself? Hey. So I take Isaiah that you burn through your bottle in less time than a month. And you have to await time as well. It's good. It's a good way to do things. That way you uh, you have a sleeping week. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always affect everyone. Like I can absolutely say, and I've said this before, that um, before I moved here and met Eric, mm -hmm. Mercury, I barely knew Mercury was in retrograde like ever. Um, in contrast, ever since I learned of it, and I don't know what it was like before, but once I learned of it, and it was, I don't know, last summer, summer before, uh, I have been starkly aware of it impacting me every time it comes around. And this time it's impacting me well because I think of the nature of the stuff that, that I have to deal with, which is both the nature of it and not resisting it. Don't resist the need to go and deal with the stuff you got to deal with. That's good. This is... I mean... <sighs> what do I think about it? I think it's nonsense. But, um, you know, by and large, if... Like, when we went to go get weed today... Uh, we had to go down to West Hollywood and the only difference in our behavior from maybe the day before was I, I put on my mask before I reached the door of the thing rather than, you know, after I got out of the car. Yeah. So walking from the car to the, to the store, I put it on and then we just took it back off when we got out of the car. I mean, I see, like, I just went to a liquor store uh, where... The guy working at the liquor store had no mask on at all. And uh, people going in there had masks on primarily because they're accustomed to stores being fussy about it. It's like once people learn what stores aren't fussy about it, then they'll just start going in there with that mask. And so yeah. it's ridiculous. It's, it's utterly pointless and silly. Sometimes people and like ex people will come back into your life during Mercury retrograde. Like people you used to talk to, but you haven't talked to in a while. That happens. That used to happen to me. Mm. Oh my goodness. This is my rock by baby. Oh, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star is a Mozart song. Yeah. Oh, I want to sing that to some, something to make it sleep. Yeah, you wrote it when he was like seven years old. Wow. Pretty crazy. I'm going to sing this to myself. Up above the world so far. I know, it's pretty cool, Isaiah. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah, me too. I haven't gone through Eric's phone emails at all today, really. I did this morning, but have you heard of modern day debate? I think you can get plenty of debate content if you contact them. What do you mean they can get plenty of debate content? Um, I forgot that there's two on Sunday with Father's Day. Oh yeah, what time are they at? I forgot about that. No, there's one at five o'clock. I know. Okay, I'm gonna have to reschedule the okay. to six, I guess. I mean, it's, a, I, it's, I, it's not, I'm not. Go to the calendar. It, here's the thing, Sky Gear. The thing to remember about me is that. The kind of debates, I'm not interested in wasting my time. Um, it, it's like, yeah, 
the reason I wanted to debate uh, that vegan guy is because he's got a clear position and he's wrong. And I want to clarify what's, you know, and he probably has, he needs to get beaten. You know, he's picking and choosing his opponents so that he can beat. He, he's avoiding uh, people like me, you know. That's not fair. So he needs to get beat. So that's fine. But of course he avoided me. I don't need to waste my time playing whatever with people who don't know what the fuck they're doing at all for no reason except just to do what? Just to be frustrated and annoyed. If somebody serious wants to debate me on something serious, I'm always down. And the problem is most people who have serious positions about stuff are scared of me, understandably. Mm -hmm. I was intimidated to even have a typing with you. <laughs> You're welcome. It's true, <laughs> honestly. That's funny. <laughs> You're not intimidated anymore. No, not at all. Actually, can I, there's something that I want to tweeze. I'm sure it's crazy. It's not on your nose. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Where do those other ones go? School of Individual Psychology was established in 1912 based on the belief that people's relationships to their society were an integral part of their individuality. Looking for the tweezers? Yeah, the other ones. Mr. Tweezers. Yeah, the, the good one. tweezers. Here they are. Thank you. Carrier's got a point there, Jeremiah. I mean, Isaiah. You've got me confused now about what his name is. Who? Isaiah. Isaiah Jeremiah's the ESTP. Oh. Oh, that's a Rudy one. Well, I mean, the point of that would be you pick your battles. Before you make a YouTube channel insisting that veganism wins the debate. Is this okay? If I look yeah, over there? Fuck away. Fuck away. Fuck your little heart out. Oh. That's horrible. So, um, I believe that each person entered the world with a definitive inferiority oh, complex and spent a lifetime trying to overcome it. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'm curious about that. So, were there a finite number of kinds of inferiority complexes, or is everybody's particular and unique? Like, can you classify people by which inferiority complex they have? Oh, really? That's an urban myth? Curious Kyra corrects me on the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star story. Really? Apparently I was bamboozled by an urban myth. Damn. That's a sad one. Yeah. What is he remembered by? Well, he's remembered by lots of his compositions. Which one? Um, let's see. I know. I think that song dun 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> you bring back Saddam Hussein. 
Mm, that's, <laughs> that's a, a good choice. one. That's <laughs> a great choice. Me too. Is that is that a Mozart song, Carver? You know. I mean, I think Mozart had a lot of famous songs, but um, uh, I don't know what his most famous song would be. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I ain't a client of knock music. Okay. How does that um, go? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Can I get this thing? Yeah, sure. Let's switch spots. So, you know, it's like... Ooh. I like classical music when it's I good. Too. Yeah. Oh, that's a song I just sang with Anna Klein and Knock Music. What other songs does he have that are famous? What's another famous Mozart song that I'd know the melody to? Um, Turka March. I wonder what that sounds like. Mozart would be a good person to bring back. He died young, so yeah, true. You figure he'd uh, he'd probably get a fair amount of work done. If he were brought back to life, uh, but of course the real question is, um, so he wrote "Here Comes the Bride," Dustin Salisbury. Is that what the wedding march is? Here comes the bride. <coughs> Here comes the bride, all dressed in white. She's got a very long dress on the floor. <laughs> That's the official words to it, I think. Wow. It's genius. That last typing session was weird. Um, I mean, but there was nothing indicating it was INFP except him. I thought the, so the Effie thing that I was asking was like, what would he wear to a um, wedding? Which just sounds so INTP, like. It's a good question. The Effie aware. And, um, yeah, it's weird. It was a weird typing session. I agree. Um, what about Shakespeare? Anybody want to bring Shakespeare back from the day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How come we haven't heard that one? Yeah, nobody said anything about Shakespeare. Yeah. I guess nobody wants any more of these, these <laughs> guys, right? And like, and like hexes on their plays. Well, you know, Octavia, so one thing that I was very pleased to be reminded of was the bully question. The bully question seems maybe the most effective question we have uh, for FI, FI testing. Right? Yeah. You know, what do you do if your kid comes home and they tell you they've been bullied at school? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, uh, do you think it's that obvious? <laughs> Someone to use an FI? 
I think the bully question is the most effective one we have. If your your kid comes home and says you've been bullied in school, how do you respond? How how far down the line of things in those responses are uh, are going to be the the, the response? Uh, so FI strong FI users consider the bully as well. Like they'll be like, well, maybe the bully needed that food that you stole from your child. And you put yourself in the bully's shoes. Um, and whereas FETI users go, you know, like ENTP, ESTP are going to be like, I go straight down to that school and raise hell, you know? And FI people are going <laughs> to, well, Sam Smith, that's, uh, that's one way to deal with it. What he said? He said he followed the bully home and kicked the shit out of him. Wow. <laughs> that's, that is one way to handle it. Probably get you arrested, but uh, you'd go into TE mode, so you wouldn't say put yourself in the bully's shoes. Oh, I wanted, I drew a teal swan card, and I wanted your interpretation of it. For me. Reveal the mystery. <laughs> huh. What do you think that means for me? Um, I think it means I'm going to get you naked later. You did reveal the mystery. Oh. I'm going to reveal your mystery to myself. Yeah. I mean, I might try to explain why bullies bully people just to make my child understand it's not their fault. Oh, Marie Curie. That's a nice, that's a very uh, well thought out pick, Nicholas Watson. Yeah, I mean, there's that approach. That's a very, you know, T, T. I T E T E approach, I guess. You know. Some people think it's deserved. Certainly. Um, you know, when I had problems with bullies in elementary school, uh, Hmm. Might be worth watching. That is. That might be worth watching for sure. You know? Gather more information. It's never. Then parse out what you want and don't. <laughs> could have gotten that. That's America. Could have gotten Not good advice. <clears throat> Not good advice. Um. Nah. I would say you want to make sure your kid is not involved in the weapon. Yeah. In this, in this occasion, for sure. What do you think about water guns? Kids having water guns. It's fine. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, I had my moment of of like bully sh shutting down the bully as well, like turning the tables on them in middle school. Wow. And it was a, uh, I mean, I had a few of those kind of moments. And so it's like, I, I had a, an odd relationship with, with the other children in general, I think, you know, people didn't know what to do with me and, and they weren't sure whether I was supposed to be bullied or, you know, it's like, who is this guy? What, what is he doing? I'm not quite sure what to make of him. I was always rather gregarious, so it's like um, I 
Well, bullies don't bully people who fight back. You know. Um, in general, they are looking for people who are easy targets. It's an excellent bullies. Yeah, I can erupt an SD if, if necessary. And there's certain circumstances, you know. Uh, even if it's like just a situation in the world that requires a lot of action to, to handle, like, you know, when my dad, uh, when my dad got identity thefted last year, um, My, my daughter and I both took a lot of action to make sure that it was it was fixed. The problem it wasn't. It's really great. And it was, you know, I, I would say Delilah probably had an easier time with that than I did. It was a struggle for me to. I hated it, you know, but I did it. Um, I hate that kind of stuff. A bunch of T-E-S-E -E shit, I hate it. It's good that Delilah was able to help that, you know? We tend to view the framework of our dominant function as unique. Yeah, I mean, I think that the ace lock function is the one that we, it's our underappreciated, ignore, mostly ignored kid brother who's doing a lot of the work and we're not paying any attention to it, you know. Um, it's the thing that enables you to be successful, I think, in general. Hi, Jason Blood. You experienced a lot of intellectual bullying at the hands of the TESI gang. Can you explain how an FI Dom might use eight slot TI? Well, in my experience with my friend Liz, who's an INFP, her TI could be in quite on point as long as it was some sort of game or contest. But they didn't, she never used it when it came time to talk about and when she complained about something or had some sort of problem. And I'd say, well, but that's not really being fair. It didn't matter. Of course, she's BPD, so I don't know how much that is a contributing factor to that. But um, my basic experience with, with the challenge of typing INFPs and INTPs is INFPs, especially if they have some sort of practice at it, are, can be quite good at the um, winning a puzzle contest kind of thing. TI. And for them, yeah, so they can display better than you expect eight slots to display yeah. on a TI. It can be challenging to type the difference between INT, INFPs and INTPs. Hey, Jason Blood. ISFPs are less likely to be as robust with their eight slot TI, but they can be depending on what they do. Something I could really do was if I let on a roll, I could talk in circles so much to the bully forgot the reason they were going after me, just they're confused. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not with that approach as well. Sounds like the slot TI is just a vestige of the ontology of the INFP or ISFP. It's just, um, well, it's like it's the other deliberation function. That's what it is. It's the other deliberation function. So if you're in a deliberation frame, then you understand both deliberation functions and you get the idea of deliberating fundamentally, just like an action type gets the idea of action. But the other kind of action that's not native to you or the other kind of deliberation that's not native to you is something you're not going to really, you know, it's the part, it's the hard part. It's the hard part. That's the other thing you can say about it about eight slot. It's not the impossible part, like seventh, it's the hard part. It's funny, my dad um, wanted to bring back Aristotle. Well, I'll tell you, you, you came in time for this. 
my dad wanted to bring back Aristotle from the dead to tell him he was wrong <laughs> because because NI is wrong, basically. He's <laughs> so NI polar. <laughs> And it's like, I love it. It's Aristotle. <laughs> I like his quotes, anyway. I mean, Aristotle's all about sort of the archetypal understanding of taxonomies earth, wind, earth, air, fire, um, water as the elements. Uh, and, you know, he, he was an advocate of the platonic form that there is an ideal perfect circle out there, but. Um, you know, it's just, may, we might have not ever manifested ourselves, but the idea of a perfect circle is, is extant. My dad's amazing. <laughs> he's fun. <laughs> he's fun. He's so, he's, he's so he anti-NI. It's, yeah. it's hilarious. You think most bullies are FI four slot or SE doms with the four slot FE? Uh, well, SE, SE doms wouldn't have fourth slot FE. They'd have four slot NI. But, um, I would suspect it would probably be, you know, ESTPs or potentially ESFPs, um, potentially even ENFPs uh, or ENTPs. But um, yeah, uh, I mean, I don't think we use it well. You got to think about like the perfect example being. Just uh, like me not following through on sending a book to an agent who requested a copy of it, you know, it's like that's just it's <laughs> just horrible. <laughs> just then that's horrible, just horrible. Serious. It's not a, yeah. a, a se. Um, bad, really bad side. Well, you know, it's getting better. Thanks. I think you're good at se too. My my. Uh, I think my NI is getting is improving your SI is improving as far as knowledge functions go. And I think also your NE and my SE are improving. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think both all the 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 one five four eight um, are all complementary between us. The casinos are open actually in Vegas. They are open. My dad just went. And uh, did I say hello to you, Waldo? Hello, Waldo Lugowski. Right, so it's about it's about absolute values and instrumental values. Same sort of stuff I'm talking about today, right? <laughs> um, you're looking for a casino in which to insert your CDs, okay. Uh, <laughs> Although I've been looking sexier, my brain power seems to be deteriorating and becoming dumber than ever. What do I do? Um, desexify. Mm. I see. Yes, I yeah, I, yeah. Double can entendre, indeed. Can we talk about Juneteenth? <laughs> Juneteenth. What? I don't really like it. Well, I do. I have to give Trump credit for saying the truth about it. He yeah, said he, he did. He I know. Gave he himself can't. credit for making yes. Juneteenth famous. Famous, yes. Not for anything oh, else. It will always be. Yeah. He did. He, he made Juneteenth mm -hmm. famous. It's the most ridiculous holiday I've ever heard. Yeah. First of all, race is inherently divisive. <laughs> race is not real. Okay. For people that that means, coming from a, I am transracial. I know. <laughs> oh, it's pee pee right now. She's not in there. Hey. Is she back there? No, no she's probably here. outside. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Are we? It'll be a busy scene. Are we working on a project to convert Jason Blood to a cyborg? Who's been spilling the beans? Excuse? Who's been spilling the beans to Jason Blood about our cyborg plan? Is it Elon Musk? Well, I'm planning on replacing Jason Blood's arm with an artificial arm, but with computers in it. Computer arm, you're going to have. 
Jason, but you're going to love it. It's going to be nothing yeah. but computer learn from now on. It makes messaging people really easy, too. And it talks in a computer voice. Right. So I am your arm, Jason, but I have a will independent of your own. Yep. So it'll just talk to you, you talk back, and everything is pretty accurate. It adapts to you. Bastards tore down another Confederate statue in North Carolina today. I don't get it. <laughs> uh oh. You want your extremities back? Okay, I'm going to give you robot arms and legs, curious Kyra. But you're going to keep your regular hands and feet. Akar say? What's Akar say? Yeah. I don't know what Akar say is. Um, I'm grateful to be here. I ain't got to say that. I guess I'll have to do a separate video at some point in your live stream about to remind everybody the truth about taking positions on race, which are inherently, this is inherently a divisive thing to do. It is divisive. Wow, that is dangerous Googling. 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 <laughs> Googling. 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 That's how it should be spelled. Googling. Googling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, life's a funny thing. Isn't it? Mm hmm. What am I leaving? I'm scared. I spent three years building 17.5 inch biceps. Okay. What are you going to do with them? You're going to lift some stuff. You're going to punch people. You're going <laughs> to. <laughs> You're going to kiss them. <laughs> the majority of the psychological community says anything over 115 on a test has only a three to 4% chance of being correct. Um, I mean, it's likely to be lower than the reported score. <laughs> hey, I'm so glad you're back, Octavia Silva. There's a lot of uh, extrovertedness going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I am glad that you're back. So, you know, one of the things about reality is that for me my level of enthusiasm or engagement has a lot to do with uh my point of point where i am on the cycle on my hormone cycle my monthly um right now i guess you'd say i'm in heavy flow Instead of heavy flow, Ooh. so you know. I hope I've been gentle to you. Oh, you have. You've been kind and gentle. Good. Yeah, that's because just a couple of days after I stopped taking my Adderall, I can sort of anticipate the general like hyperness level rising over the coming days, um, and enthusiasm and stuff. They also knocked down a Thomas Jefferson at, and in Portland. In it was in Portland. Why are they knocking down statues? How dumb is that? God. Yes, yeah, yeah. What a year, 2020, huh? What a year. What a crazy year. Can we not talk about it? Because mm -hmm. it's year of the rat, and I'm a rat, so. It's not your fault, it's crazy. I year. know. I know. It's been a, it's been a yeah, right? <laughs> it's been a doozy. <laughs> it's been a weird year. It's also been a weird year, calendar year, from June to yeah. June. I mean, how much has changed from June to June is incredible. Oh my God, are you kidding me? It's like there was... You know, a year ago, um, a good topic. I had the summer camp right around now. Uh, shortly thereafter, Spacey started living with me and Kimberly. 
And now, totally different life. You know, no possible chance one year ago, I or anyone else would have predicted that this was where I'd be with Rachel Lapalosa, um, a person who commented on some of my videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're on the verge of tears, maybe it's an e p thing. Why are you on the verge it, of tears? Are you, just feeling, are you just feeling like moist? It's it one is, of those moisture days. It may be an ENTP thing. It does happen. What I get very is moist it? sometimes. But I love it. Oh my goodness. I would never I wouldn't um tell you like not to feel something. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, Octavia is so I was at the, the summer camp years ago. No, it was is that one bananas? year ago. One year ago. Isn't that bananas? It's, it's bananas in my mind. I remember Spacey was still here when Rachel came. Yeah. In September. I met Spacey and that's bananas too. I thought that was gonna go so differently. Whew. Yeah, things I mean things. it's been a very <laughs> it's been a very upheaval y upheaval a year. You can't turn off your moistness. Well, that just goes with the territory, INFP. Just goes with the territory. Someone's water's about to break? Might be mine. Might be hers. Might be my man's seat's about to break. Probably. Yeah. We're going to wrap this up in about 10 minutes, I think, Rachel. I'm going to take a bath. And uh, I want to have some chill time before I got to get up and do a type in at 11. Oh, that's a good idea. You mind if I uh, take a bath after you? Uh, I appreciate that. I'll use the uh, water that you use. You don't have to use the water. It's really? Ridiculous. Just make new water. Like okay. Mm. You know what this means, don't you? <laughs> I think you do. I think we all know what that means. It means making a donut. Any folk can have the metal part of the donut. Yep. Oh, unlocking the door, right. Unlocking the door and making True. it out. Unlocking the door, yes. So, Walda, I'm curious. Why are you so sad? Tell me about it. Yeah. This, the crying may help you sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and you may not get sleep, so take care of yourself. <clears throat> what happened? Well, I want to know what's wrong with Walda Ludowski. Me too, Ski. Is he sad because he tried to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> How many times? Because he is Polish. It's, it's, oh, that's funny. That's where the funny comes from. <laughs> you can't screw one of them by yourself. You should know that, Waldo. <laughs> yes, Isaiah. <laughs> You're... You've got a lot of dopamine going on, I can tell. You found this channel August of last year, it seems. How did you find that out? Probably IV steroids OD from my hospital stay back in December. That's what's wrong with you? Why would, um, why would that be bothering you now? Isaiah Rude, I need to stop the afterglow, though. That is good advice to yourself. For real. That's some good third slot I feed. Mm -hmm. Although, I, uh, it depends. Sometimes if you rarely nail one, you just got well, to Of course, if you're winning the World Series, you have every right. But, like, you know, if it's a little thing, bitch, be humble. Sit down. Right. You know? I have to keep myself in check, too. One good thing about being a manager of world is you get to tell people what to do. That's true. It's true. I have Tumblr, Octavia Silva. I'm very glad that you make Tumblr posts for the channel. Thank you, Octavia Silva. You're a wonderful human being. We have to find out how to... What's your name on Tumblr? I'll follow you. That'd be nice to have a friend on Tumblr. Yeah. Solum. Solum draw is a kicker. Never teared. Never teared up the dose. 
never teared up the dose up before. Never teared up before the dose. So the next three months crying. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of time to wash out of the system. Wow. It could be a side effect of the medication. That's what he's saying. That's mm. how I felt. When Rachel was on the wrong meds, she was very... Uh, depressed. Yeah, depressed. It came out of me and I was like... like, Whenever we went to any psychiatrist, my parents were always like, no, she's mania a lot. Like, She doesn't have the depression. She kicks out of it pretty quickly. And this, I was just, like, crying and crying and crying. And um, then we talked to the doctor, and he was like, oh, sounds like this. So we're going to fix it with this. And it's been working. It's been working perfectly. Yeah. We're, we're waiting to see the test of the mm -hmm. upcoming period. To see Thomas Aquinas. Now I know who you are. Is that maybe a bad Catholic? <coughs> no. I am, though. Well, you don't seem to know the Bible very well. <laughs> I don't know the Bible at all. At all. I bet, Isaiah. I bet you it has. They put B.A. as in bold. Hmm. The problem is, when I'm not doing much other than studying, it gets boring. It's a procrastinating anymore. Yeah, studying is boring. You need, a, you need a study group. You need somebody. Basically, to be successful at studying, NTP, either E or I, needs somebody, preferably like a cute girl, to say, can you teach me this thing I don't understand? And then you'll learn it to teach it to them. You know, that's why that was the original, like, that was the OG realism of Facebook. That's what fa Facebook was OG style about, like, try to, like, so you connect with people on campus. Mm. Three-day max on IV dosage in a 24-7 day for seven days. That sounds very Why did they do that? Extreme, yeah. Oh, they thought it would fix the paraplegia. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, we just fried your system. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. Me too. Any interesting community I joined just died in birth? Not this one. It's still the same as it's always been. You know, yeah, 11 it people is. here. <laughs> yeah. A duck's quack has no echo and nobody knows why. Is that true? That's so cool. If that's true, that's weird. Yeah. And cool. And probably lucky. Yeah, well, I really do feel better. I'm sorry to hear about Me that. Me too. You know. It is Mercury in a retrograde ball, though. So mm -hmm. it makes sense that you'd be dealing with some old things re re reoccurring now. Yeah. All polar bears are left handed. Huh? How do you just, yeah, you just gotta be making this shit up. <laughs> How do you test the handedness of a polar bear? I guess. I mean, well, how do you, how do you try to, bear and that made me confused. Oh, I guess you could test the handedness of them, but how, how do you know that it's true for all polar bears? Yeah. How many polar bears have you tested? Female kangaroos what? have three vaginas? Cora, you can't, you can't believe everything on. Okay, well, look. On. When they say they have three vaginas, that means a male kangaroo has three possible holes that can lead to the to the ovum? Right. Or does it mean something else? Because that's the only way it's really a true statement is if it means that. If the male kangaroo can pick one of three different holes and it all leads to the same thing. Now, a human male can pick one of three different holes, but they lead to very different places. If ENFJs are a type of cheese, what kind of cheese would that be? American. Aww. ENFJs are American that cheese. That is, it's American cheese. What's INFJ? Cheddar. <gasps> Thanks, baby. NHP, monster. 
<gasps> I love monster cheese. Mm -hmm. Especially when grilled. INTP Jack. INFP Gouda. ENFP Brie. Um, no fancy ENFP. Who's Colby? Colby. ISTP. Um, I'd say, uh, let's see, uh, Cameron Bear is going to be your ESFP. Feta. Feta is your ISFPs. Mm, very good choice. Mm -hmm. um, ENTJs are uh, like a uh, hard cheese, like a Parmesan that's yet to grate. Um, so, and, and ESTJs are mozzarella, I think. Mm, good choice, too. You know, very workmanlike cheese. Yeah, yeah, it's an art. Um, let's see. Who's good I, cheese? INTJs are going to be um, a kind of expensive French cheese that melts really well. What's it called? Gruyere. Gruyere. Mm -hmm. INTJs get to be uh, Gruyere. Um, ISTJs are provolone, Octavio. ISF, uh, ESFJs are cream cheese. Feta cheese. I, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, ESFJs are cream cheese. Yeah, cream My cheese. So she used to eat cream cheese and jelly <laughs> crackers all the time. I was like, you eat cream cheese over peanut butter? Yeah, she does. Cream cheese is a good one for ESFJ. All right, so check this out. Octavia Silva called me a check. bastard and the first Tumblr post about her. What did I do to deserve that? I'm <laughs> so curious. funny. I want to know what I did. That is so funny, y'all. <laughs> that is so funny. That's and that's just summarizes like your personality right there. That like <laughs> one of like your biggest like followers at the first glance would be like talk bad. <laughs> I said these are usually controlled by the joint by the entry back. That's great. <laughs> I, that's what I felt like tonight. <laughs> At least I wasn't being like C.S. Joseph and saying, here's how you control them. <laughs> True. That's not nice at all. Yeah, he's got all those uh, social engineering, social Ooh, engineering. excellent pairs. <laughs> yeah. I think it I definitely have to be some sort of fancy. Do we miss any? Uh, what did we see with no, we... Uh Brie. Brie. Yes, I think we got them all. Cool. Oh, ISFJ we didn't get. We didn't get ISFJ or ESTP. Yes. ISFJ. Um, provolone? Yeah, I think I, I think I think ISFJ gets provolone. ESTP gets Swiss. ESTP gets Swiss. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's today, it. Guys. We have everyone. And now we've gotten everyone. Okay, so Blanco. Oh, for ESTP. That's a very Mexican cheese, though. Um, mm -hmm. possibly could be. Uh -huh. Maybe south of the border. That's what ESTPs Queso. are. Okay, so Blanco. Yeah. Is it like the? It's I like, like it. The Mexican cheese. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, I think I'm about ready to wrap this up. Uh, take a bath and, you know, chill for a bit before the 11 o'clock. Uh, yeah. I'm glad uh, that Isaiah will probably still be awake, even though it's two in the morning. Oh, thanks. ISFJ Thank is Limburger. Let's not be quite so mean to the ISFJ. That program. is not right. Yes. I think that I ISFJs think get that. to be provolone. Nobody provolone likes Limburger. Yeah, yeah. Provolone is still. It's, it's, Have it's, you ever had Limburger cheese? It's supposed to be the stinkiest cheese ever. Right. I'm not having it. No. Everyone ever always. They used to talk. That used to be a little rascal's joke. Um, there's an episode where the kid is trying to sell his Limburger cheese. <laughs> yeah. But no one will buy it because it's so stinky. 
Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Before we go and leave this live stream, I'm going to go get our <gasps> new baby loaf. We have a baby loaf. We're going to have some baby loaf. And we're going to have a, a little bit of non-alcoholic beer with it. Thanks, you guys, for being here. Bye, Jason Blood. Ciao. I believe ciao means hello and goodbye in uh, Italian. Does anyone know? Yeah, baby loaf. You'll see. It's basically like the size, it's the size of like a baby. Hi, Katie. She's Zaz, the French singer. Bye, Zayrud. We're going to make a treat plate. We've got cheese, oh, pickles, pickles, and beer. That sounds delicious. Hi, Katie Meow. Cool, Bill Bur Burkett. Thank you for answering. See, that's the baby loaf. They had. This is the baby loaf. The and they loaf. actually. They, they actually call it baby loaf. Mm -hmm. This is the proper one. This is the kind that is, is worth. Unfortunately, we don't have any fresh pineapple. Brand. We did buy a pineapple, but I have to let it ripen. Yes. Still loves Tillamook cheese, too. Yeah, it's the best. Cool. I've never known. What are contronyms? Yeah, what are contronyms? Hi, I'm Dick Francis Nicholas Watson. Nicholas Watson, what type are you? Do you know? Night. Van Gogh. I always thought Van Gogh was an INFP. That would be my guess as well. For Van Gogh. Here, Kitty, you want a little piece of cheese? Hi, Kitty Precious Pants. Hello. You want this? No? Try it, it's good. And the peacock likes it. No? Fine. Be that way. <laughs> it's okay. Kitty, you know, is picky. She likes her <laughs> wild gaming. And, and, and you like fish too. Yeah. Yes, don't I didn't forget that. Be that I know you like your salmon. Or no, no, tuna. Yeah. Mm. Looks like the one from our garden. Thank you. Kitty, you don't want pickles. Kitties don't like pickles. No, they don't. Now let me get some. They say that in the Pickle Rick episode, too. It's the, the kitty who has knocked it over. You've been getting to get ready for the grocery store? Cool. We went to the Smart and Final today. And, uh, yeah. We got all kinds of stuff for like 80 some bucks. It's a good deal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mmm. Mm. Delicious cheese. Mm hmm. This is pickle. Good thing that it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, you saved me. 
I'm clunking my tea, thank you. My front teeth are chipped from beer bottles, believe it or not. We're apt to news. I don't know. What are aftronyms? Oh, ultra chads. This is new terminology to me. Oh my gosh, this is so good. A person's name is regarded as amusingly appropriate to their occupation. Like, um,. Somebody named Stone working in a rock quarry. Mm. I when I wonder when that was made a law. Like what put that into effect? Did you know how handsome you are? Mm. Well. I only have a limited amount of data to go on, but I guess we're going to say very handsome. Yes! Thank so you, handsome. You're so sweet to me. I like being sweet to you. You're a sweetheart yourself. <laughs> Taylor Sewing. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, good. That was good. good mm-hmm. <laughs> Bernie Madoff also works. Mm. I once knew a new I once knew a lawyer with the last name of Bernie. Oh, how about California politician Dick Mountjoy? <laughs> <laughs> of course he would be a California politician. Ruin the people, you know? <laughs> There's a really a California <laughs> politician named Dick Mountjoy. Stop! That can't be true. <laughs> oh, fuck no. I love this world. I really do. I really love this state as well, I have to say. I mean, <sighs> the Mountjoy family. <laughs> when they learned to name their son Richard, they were really going all out. <laughs> you love my privilege right there. <laughs> I don't know what I don't even know what I can say anymore. Hi, Jerry, like but I can say that you are the pageant winner. Yeah, you are. Hello, beauty pants. Mm. Yo, what up, Angans here? Are you going to be like chilling in that towel or getting ready to put some clothes on? Um, I agree, Waldo. It's a good observation. Acronyms make this world seem like a simulation. Yeah. You're moist. I think there's moist, everybody. <gasps> Are we all be in our fields? Uh, well, I'm thinking if, if you have a dry towelette, you can moisten it on engines here. You can moisten up any dry towelettes you have just by pushing them against the engine here. Mm -hmm. Every beauty contest from the state of Ohio and everywhere else, too. She's the kitty pageant winner. Yes, you are. Oh, she loves her daddy. Hi, Dandy. Hey, Sandy. And Jerry like the mouse. Her name is not Zanatti. Thank you. <laughs> It's 
to the Hattie. <laughs> it's zombie, okay? An office secretary named Felicia Rodner? <laughs> I don't get that one. <laughs> Mmm. You know what's good? Cheese and beer. Yeah. And cheese and pretzels and beer. I, I like cheese and pretzels. And pickles and beer. Yeah. They all go well together. Uh -huh. Oh boy. We can see Angus' hairy wet chest. This is what happens when Angantir gives TMI too much information. But, I mean, this is coming from me. We give a little bit too much information. I do. Mm hmm. Bay? How long are you just went? Felicio and Rod or something implied slimy oral contact, but was a bit too vague. Uh, oh, I got it. I don't know what's wrong with the game. I literally just watched that exact scene in PewDiePie's stream and I got bored. How's PewDiePie doing? Is he still like the big thing? Everyone still watches him? What is Last of Us 2? Video game? <laughs> That's good, Isaiah Rude. Of whom's of whom's the <laughs> Don't make me win to whomever your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I do too, actually. Because you corrected me on whom before. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty pie thing engaging in a lot of encroachment these days. What does that mean? I don't know. Kyra, what do you mean by that? I'm going to finish my treat party. This has been quite a treat party, hasn't it? It really has been. I'm going to finish my treat party with a cigarette. I'm feeling when Rachel finishes her cheese and her pretzels and her pickles, she'll probably finish her treat party with a bowl. He's right. And then... You'll be done with your bath. Then I'll be done with your bath, right? Encroaching on the impressionable teeny bobber mind. Not just teeny bobbers who love PewDiePie. Okay, I say everybody loves PewDiePie. Ew, I really hold up. I, I liked him and his wife. I thought they were like. Yeah, why not? Yeah. They were like really <laughs> cute. And like, I mean, he doesn't use his blinker when merging on the freeway. That is terrible. Mm. Absolutely terrible. I don't do that either. <clears throat> Usually, the thing is, if you, uh, tending to his memes, <laughs> if you um, signal on the freeway when you're going to get over, it's kind of just giving the person behind you unnecessary warning so they can speed up and prevent you from getting over. Might as well just go. You know. 
spirit piece is good too. I don't like when my my pizza is too oily though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it can get a little oily. It can. It depends. Well, it is. It is oily. I like pizza though. Yeah, I agree. Pete's just having fun at this point because why did he? He's got all the money he needs, you know. Who? Cutie Pie. Yeah. So he tries to be relevant by edgy content. That's all though. All right, Kyra. Enjoy your your shopping. Don't forget to buy a baby loaf of cheese. Yeah, baby loaf of cheese. You can that'll put an end to that whole vegan thing. Don't That's forget. Fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's fine. You don't need that vegan thing anyway. We got two more quarters for the piggy bank. He has the most subs by trying to be the most relevant. The day he's up trying his subs tank. Interesting. That's gonna be exhausting. Well, well. Sandy, I've been wearing um the lipstick and the mascara that I'm wearing right now is um of the gift I love, the gift that you gave me when we met. Thank you very much for it. <sighs> All right, I think it's about time to wrap this up. I'm going to start my bath and uh, <laughs> that's a good oh one, God, Isaiah. That is a good one. It's a good one. That is. I'll see you at 11 o'clock, <laughs> Isaiah. Bye, everybody. Bye. We heart you. We heart you a lot.